Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going over what are frames and machines and how to solve these types of problems in statics. So frames and machines are structures that contain at least one non-straight member or they have a multi-force member which has more than two forces acting on it. So let's label the joints here and this will make it easier to talk about the members. So on the top we have member ABC, the bottom we have member FED, and then we have member BE and CD. So you'll notice that all of these members are straight, so that's not what makes this a frame. Uh, what makes this a frame and not a truss basically is that we have some of these members uh, with more than two forces acting on them. So if we looked at, let's say, member ABC, there'll be some force from the reaction here acting on the member. There'll be some force from this member BE, whether it's pushing or pulling, if this member is in tension or compression. And then there'll be some force here acting uh, at point C on this member ABC from this member uh, CD. So this member has three forces acting on it. FED actually has four forces acting on it because there's some reaction here at F. There's something going on here at E, whether this is pushing or pulling. Uh, CD is doing something at this pin and there's also the supplied force F2. So this member actually has four forces acting on it. Um, this guy CD uh, looks like there's going to be uh, something at the pin here. This member ABC will be kind of pushing or pulling on it. Uh, something from this pin, from FED, will be kind of pushing or pulling on member CD, and then there's also this third force, F1, uh, so this would also have three forces acting on it. And this last guy, little, this little one here, BE, we can look at it and notice that there's actually only two forces. There'll be something from this pin pushing or pulling, and then there'll be something from this pin pushing or pulling, and this would actually be, a, because it's straight and it's a two-force member, this is either only going to be in tension or compression, and those forces um, will just be equal and opposite and that will help us in our analysis identifying any two force members. And so just to clarify, frames and machines are solved basically in the same way, but a frame is the word that we use uh, for something that is typically stationary, that's a structure that's designed to support some loads, like this would be a frame. And machines are designed to transmit forces and uh, they typically have some input force and uh, a modified output force. That would be like a lever or pliers or maybe even a forklift or something like that. Uh, but we solve these in exactly the same way. So really it's just a two-step process. Well, at the highest level it's a two-step. Uh, all we want to do for the first step to solve these problems is we want to draw the free body diagram of the entire object and then solve for as many of the reaction supports as we can. So just drawing on the unknown reaction supports and then using your sum of forces in X, sum of forces in Y, and sum of moments about any point, treating this all as one object, typically we'll be able to solve for some of these, uh, but usually not all of them. And actually, if we notice, uh, if we did consider this as a whole object, we have three equations to work with for the whole object. Uh, and we actually have four unknowns, so AX, AY, FX, and FY. So as an entire solid object, this would be statically indeterminate, but because this is a frame and there's a trick that we can do, uh, we'll actually be able to solve for these four by basically solving for the free body diagrams for each member independently. So what we need to do would be, once we solve for whatever forces we can, is draw a free body diagram for each member, and I, I like to think of it as a bit of an exploded diagram. And once we have all of the pieces separated out, then we can just draw on all of the reactions. Now in the case where we have a, an externally applied force acting right at a joint. Um, here, if we left them both like this, we would double count that. So we can choose to actually draw the, uh, the externally applied force on either of these, and it, will, it won't actually matter as long as we only draw it once. So maybe let's just erase uh, this one, it's just like that. So this way we won't be double counting this externally applied force. All right. So what we want to do is we just want to come in and draw, yeah, draw all the, external, all the external forces. I know that this one here is that two force member. And so just kind of a same convention that we might use uh, from, from drawing trusses is I'll just call this tension and I'll, I'll draw, I'll assume it's tension. If I find this to be a negative number, then I will just know that it's in compression and the force acts in the opposite way. And then when I come down to the other, the other members, basically it has to be equal and opposite force. So if I said it was tension pulling that way, the tension has to resist the opposite direction on the other member for that joint to be in equilibrium. All right. Now for these guys, it's not as easy, um, but the way that I'll do this is I'll just draw on, uh, let's say, maybe I'll do it this way. 
a vertical and a horizontal reaction. So I'll just call this CX and CY. So this is just the unknown force that's acting here at that pin. And from this guy, it just has to be opposite. So it would just be like this, CX. And this would be going down, so that would be CY. Cool. Uh, similarly, I'll just draw on DX and DY. So maybe just assume directions. It doesn't really matter. Uh, if we ever find them to be in the, the opposite or negative sense, then that just means that you know we've assumed the wrong direction. Okay, so DY. And then here, I would just draw the opposites. So DY, in this case, would be going down. And, uh, and it would be acting this way for dx. And if you think about this, if we have this member, let's say member CD, yeah, the x component of it is maybe, you know, pulling in one direction, then at that joint, this, this member has to be equal and opposite in the, in the x component. So anytime we have a joint, make sure that what we've drawn on each of the two uh, corresponding members that they are opposite. So if CX is going this way, it just has to be going the other way. If CY is going up, now it has to be going down. All right, and what this is really cool because we went from having three equations, uh, three equations and four unknowns, to actually having, we have a lot more unknowns now. We have nine unknowns, which are AX, AY, T, CX, CY, DX, DY, and so on. Um, where you know F1 and F2 would be known, they would be given to us in the problem. Uh, and actually from the beginning we would have solved for a few of these, maybe we might have got AX or something and that might help us out. But really the important thing is we also have nine equations that we can work with. So for member ABC we'll have the sum of force in X, sum of force in Y, and sum of moments about some point. For member CD we have the same thing and for member FED we have the same thing. So basically we just have nine unknowns and nine equations and we got these three equations from three independent sets. Uh, so for the member ABC, member CD, and member FED, uh, AB, the, the three members are independent from each other, um, but they're not independent compared to the entire free body diagram of the entire structure. But that doesn't actually matter because when we drew the free body diagram of the entire structure, we might have been able to find maybe one or two of these. And in that case, if we've already been able to solve for maybe two of those, uh, then we would really, we would have seven remaining unknowns in nine equations. And that just makes it a little bit easier for us when we go to uh, actually work through these one at a time and solve for the remaining unknowns. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, we'll be able to solve for all of these. But really, the question will probably be asking just what are the, the reaction forces? And then so we would be able to find those and then uh, provide those as an answer to the question. So stick around and in the next couple of videos we'll do, uh, we'll actually put some numbers to this exact problem and solve it and then we'll go over a couple more things about frames and machines uh, and uh, 2D statics problems.